Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to cover all the important keyboard and mouse settings in Fortnite Battle Royale. I made a guide like this last year that you all absolutely loved, so I thought why not update it. Basically what I'm going to do is go in depth into all these settings past the first settings page. That includes stuff like your sensitivity, your keybinds, edit on release, it's everything outside of graphic settings. By the way, I made a video only on graphic settings like two weeks ago, so go watch that, I'll link it down below. Regardless, what I'll also do for this video is attach a keyboard cam. That way I can actually show you guys with my keyboard and mouse why I prefer certain settings and how different tricks work. I got a few pro tricks up my sleeve, so I apologize to everyone watching who's on controller. Unfortunately, this is only for keyboard and mouse, but without further ado, let's get right on into it. Alright, hopefully you guys can see me. I'm now on the bottom right of your screen. If I go into my settings, I guess I'll show the first page. I'm not gonna explain it. Just copy whatever I use. It's pretty much the best. Only thing I would change is if you guys are not on good PCs, you're maybe on a laptop or you don't get stable FPS, change your rendering mode to performance. Outside of that, they'll get you the most FPS, the least input delay, and they'll make your game look nice. We don't really care about this page though. We care more about all of these pages starting with the second, your game settings. Language and region, who cares? I'm in East, by the way. Movement though, that's where it gets spicy, and that's where we'll start. So toggle sprint is first. In case you guys don't know what this is, you can read it. It's above me. The setting explanation is right there. Essentially what it does is with one button, aka your sprint button, you can just sprint normally, and then when you press it again, you're no longer gonna sprint. You'll just do the little bot walk. I don't really know why you'd ever use it. For that reason, and the fact that I've sprint by default on, turn toggle sprint off, you don't need it. What you need is the setting I just said, sprint by default. This is the best setting in Fortnite ever. Sprint by default makes it so you don't even have to press a button, all you have to do is press W and you will sprint forward. When you don't press it, obviously you don't run, you don't go anywhere. This makes it so you can never do the bot walk, you can only sprint. However, a little cheeky trick that Liquid Stretch taught me is in your keybind settings, if you go down to sprint, you see See how I have a keybind for this? I have it on C. What this does, even with sprint by default on, is when you press C, you do the bot walk. So you can crouch and do the really slow crouch walk. You can uncrouch and then do the normal bot walk. There's basically no reason not to use sprint by default because you can just use this keybind trick to get the bot walk. You don't have to use toggle sprint or anything else. All you need is sprint by default on. After sprint by default, sprint cancels reloading. I turn it off. I mean, some people do use it not a lot of pros. It's kind of in the name, but say I shoot, then I go to reload and I sprint, it cancels it for me, which can be annoying if you're not moving, you reload and then, hey, why can't I reload? It's because you're sprinting. Auto open doors on the other hand, turn that on ASAP. If you don't have this on already, you're out of your mind. It is so good. Anytime you accidentally make a door edit, which is a lot, you just run right through it. You don't lose any momentum. Not to mention, if you have a charged shotgun, which is not in this map, unfortunately, you could use this setting to open doors as you charge it, and then just walk through, boom, easy kill, full charge shotgun shot to the mouth. Those were all the movement setting options. We'll now move to the combat settings, beginning with hold to swap pickup. I'm not sure if this was in my last video, voice crack, but I recently turned it on. So what this does is it allows you, you see my shotgun, how it's in the third slot? If I normally pick this up, right? It's just gonna go to the back of my inventory. It's now in the fifth slot, which I really just do not want. What I'd much rather have is my purple pump get swapped for the blue pump, and that's exactly what this setting does. You see that? Look at my third inventory slot. I'm swapping these two shotguns repeatedly. Pretty useful, right? Now, if you're wondering how the heck I'm doing this since I've scroll wheel pickup and that's what I recommend you all use, it's another keybind trick. So in my settings, my keybind settings, I have double bound my use or my interact option on both mouse wheel up as well as another key, which is X. What this allows me by putting two keybinds here is anytime I just wanna use normal scroll wheel, boom, I can. I can interact or pick up things just normally really fast. However, say I wanna go and swap it it, with my third slot like I showed before, or even my second slot, all I'm gonna do is hold down the other keybind, which is X, boom, holding it down, and it swaps it out. I'll do it one more time. This is X, hold to swap, and then this is normal scroll wheel. 
boom. So now I have a much wider range of options for how I could pick up weapons. I basically have more control of my inventory, which most people really wouldn't think about. But if you're trying to become the best and eliminate any type of errors or just awkward situations, you really should have hold to swap pick up on and two different use keybinds if you use scroll wheel. 200 IQ. Next up, we have toggle targeting, which I recommend turning off. Again, it's a setting that some people do have on. Not a lot. I just think it gives you less control because if I right click, I'm now aiming in. My hand is off my mouse and I'm still aiming in. The way I aim out is by clicking again. So aim in, aim out. The way most people prefer is with it off, which is you have to hold your right click. That way you can aim in and out really fast. You don't have to double click. You just hold and release. It's kind of like edit on release just for aiming in. It's way faster, way more optimal. There's no reason to have the toggle target on. Just turn it off. From there, mark when targeting. This is basically, I can target normally. It's blue, 54 meters away. But if I aim in and then I target, boom, it's red. I don't really know why you wouldn't have this option. You're never going to accidentally target red when you mean blue. Turn it on. No reason to have it off. Fourth on the list, auto pickup weapons I have off. I used to turn this on way back in the day. All it does is if you run over something, it picks it up automatically, which I will admit is useful for early game fights. Say you're running for a gun, you can just land on it. The thing is, what happens a lot is you'll just be running through a lot of loot and it will pick up everything, which you may not want. Therefore, I turn it off. I make myself pick up my own weapons. It kind of comes back to the control thing. Last setting in the combat options is auto sort consumables to the right. You 100% want this on. Let's say I had this setting off. Boom, I pick it up. It's now in my two slot or my one slot technically for weapons. And that's where I have my AR. That's not good because I might accidentally pull it out and then I try to shoot, but I just throw minis like an idiot. That's why you pretty much always want it on. Anything you pick up will be automatically put in your last slot to the right. Mine's over here. And now I won't ever accidentally whip out minis <laughs> when I need to take out my AR. It may have happened to me once or twice. The building settings options are pretty straightforward on keyboard and mouse. The first one is reset building choice. This really does not matter. And that's because on keyboard and mouse, you have four different keybinds for each building choice. You should not be using quick bar to bring out your builds. That's really only for controller. And I don't even know if controller still does that. Keyboard and mouse, just press the correct keybind. You never need to use this setting. Reset edits when entering build mode is actually a new setting. It was added, I think, a few weeks ago. And what it does, is anytime you pre-edit your build, so I'm gonna pre-edit this. Well, if I swap to my pickaxe or just my weapon, and then I come back to my wall, my wall has now been reset. I'll show it again with a ramp. Boom, my ramps are now messed up. I'm gonna go to my shotgun, back to my ramps. And look, my ramps have been re-pre-edited. I don't have to worry about the fact I pre-edited, pre-edited like an idiot. No reason for it off. After that, turbo building, of course, have that on. If you don't have turbo building on, I really Really don't know what you're doing with your life. You're either stuck in season two or you're just a weirdo. Don't be a weirdo. I just realized confirm edit on release is in the building options. Hmm. In my humble opinion, my expert Jerryan opinion, turn confirm edit on release on. It's so good, man. To kind of help explain why, I will show normal editing. What you do is you press edit, you select the tiles, and then you confirm the edit by pressing your edit button one more time. Boom. You could edit pretty fast with this. I'm slow because I'm used to confirm edit on release. But why the heck would you ever do that when you can simply turn confirm edit on release on and press one button to edit? I press my edit key, I select, and I let go. It's so beautiful. I don't have to press my edit button again, meaning it's faster. It's better for movement because I can return my finger to my D key. I no longer have to worry about not being able to strafe to the right as I edit. And on top of that, if you have any keybinds on your index finger, that's this long one, your pointer finger. Well, actually, that won't apply for everyone. It kind of depends on what you edit with. But since most people edit with E, G, or F, you're then able to build faster with whatever other build binds you have on that same finger. So me personally, I have my floor on F. If I edit with edit on release, I can press F immediately after. I don't have to worry about hitting E again like you do without confirm edit on release, which takes my index finger 
computer even more time to press F and eventually build my floor. Edit on release is actually a huge reason you see a lot of pro players with bad keybinds. Guys like Booga, Stretch, the reason their movement is not that bad is because they use edit on release and they don't have to press their edit key two times. But Jarian, Mongrel doesn't use it, Benji Fishy doesn't use it. I will admit, edit on release is not perfect. You can still get really good with it off. It also technically gives you a little bit more control because you don't have to leave your crosshair here. I have it off right now, you can see my crosshair is looking down and I can confirm the edit. Boom. It's a lot better for holding edits. At least to me though, how many times do you make those in a real game? Like, say I'm making a top corner edit. Even without confirm edit on release on, I'm gonna make the edit right here and have to flick anyways. How many people in game bring their crosshair down here and then wait for the edit? Nobody does that in real time. By the way, this is what it looks like with confirm edit on release. It just does not work. Still though, it's up to you. If you feel like you have less control with it, like you have to flick more, which you technically do a little bit, a little tiny bit. It's objectively more optimal for your movement and building. It's also Papa Jarian approved. Let's move on. Tutorial is not important. Extra game options. Let me know how many people use this. I don't think anyone does. What invert view is, is basically your up is down and your down is up. I used to play this way on controller. I'm not even kidding. You don't really want it for keyboard and mouse. Invert airborne controls. I don't fly planes. They're not a competitive, so it doesn't matter. Turbo build, delete in creative mode. Turn it on, I guess. Who cares? Nvidia highlights, I have off. I turn them on through my PC, not through Fortnite. Peripheral lighting, again, off. It eats up your FPS a little bit. And then tap to search, turn on. On. This was the setting before where all I have to do is press my interact key I'm gonna press X even though it says scroll wheel up I just tapped it I did not have to hold and it's in my inventory The only way scroll wheel works is if you have tap to search on so that's why I use it Plus you guys got to remember if you double bind your use key you could still use hold to swap. It's genius I almost forgot replays. I have replays on because I'm a content creator noob I recommend you guys have it off though. It does save a lot of FPS, especially on console. That's this whole settings page, all your game options. We will now continue on to your game UI slash HUD options, which is pretty darn simple. I really suggest everyone have their HUD scale at over 100%. 100% should be the minimum. I'll show 125%. It looks really big, but it's so much easier to tell how many mats you have. You will never not know how many mats you have in an end game. Same with what weapons you have, everything, your mini map. It's so nice, and I don't know why people don't use it. Everyone wants these really small HUD scales like this. They're like, yeah, it looks cooler for my montages. Bro, your montage is not gonna look good when you're dying endgame because you don't know how many mats you have. Turn HUD scales on to at least 100%. As far as HUD scale options go, the only kind of weird ones I don't have on, maybe latency debug stats, that's the setting in your top left. It basically shows your input delay, so I would only turn it on in creative. That reminds me, turn latency markers off. Not sure why I have that on. The other important HUD option was reticle ammo indicator. I turn this off and I think most people, including most pros, have it off. It's the setting that shows how much ammo you have. It's only there for a few seconds. I saw Liquid Stretch have it on. I think most people, including most good players, should know how long, kind of how long their reloads take and when they're actually near out of ammo. You get a different sound when you have no ammo. I don't really need an ammo indicator. Again though, that's kind of up to you guys. I'm gonna leave it off. These are what I have on and off. Enjoy them. We are now on sensitivity, and you might be wondering, am I really on 9%? The answer is yes, but also no, because I switched my DPI to 800. That means I'm actually on a pretty high sense. I'm on like a medium high. I'm higher than Benji's current sense, which is crazy. I never thought I would get that high. For me, a lot of it was because my mechanics were just way too slow. You guys probably remember, before peace control was a thing, before fast mechanics actually mattered, I played on a crazy low sense. Unfortunately for me though, times have changed. You basically need really good mechanics to be a good solo player, which is essentially all I am. <laughs> you also need them just to not get pieced up. That's why I'm currently on high slash medium high sense. It's also why my mechanics look way better. Oh, never mind. 
I know people are gonna ask me which I think is better, high, medium, or low. Remember boys, it's always gonna be preference. If you're good on low sense, if you can hit your shots like Arkram. Arkram plays on like 48 EDPI. His edits aren't the fastest in the world, but his precision, his crosshair placement, it all makes up for it. Same thing applies with Mongrel. Those dudes just whip their arm around. I can't really do that. The way that I found my current sense was through the PSA method. I've talked about the PSA method method before, it's basically the best way to find your sense. What does Fortnite recommend? 28%? <laughs> The way the PSA method works is using whatever mouse pad you have. You guys can see mine, it should be in view. You basically want to find the sense that does one perfect 360. So you can see this does way more than one. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe 6.3%. It's kind of random, but you guys can see my mouse is on one end of my mouse pad. I'm going to start by looking at this tree, slowly drag it all the way across. No way is this perfect. No way. Oh, it's a little too fast. I think one perfect 360 might be like five percent 800 dpi come on come on okay that's good enough look where my mouse is it's basically on the edge this is gonna be the base point with this sense you kind of just want to crank oh my gosh you guys can see i'm struggling oh evidently i need something higher so what i'm gonna do is go back to my settings and adjust it by one percent one percent higher obviously this was my old sense old as in like two seasons ago this was back before piece control was important and it was all about your aim i'm not gonna lie i'm not too bad with this for me though i want higher i'm then gonna adjust it again by one percent and repeat this process until i find my perfect sense you can always adjust by more than one percent or less than one percent sometimes you can do half a percentage you just want to go until you find something that you really like oh by the way in case you guys want to know my peripherals i'm rocking the xm1 benji fishy's mouse i'm also using the apex pro in Instead of the Razer Huntsman. I switched like a week ago because I was just bored. And then the mouse pad is the same I always use. The mouse pad company. Started by Epic Whale. He's my boy. Hashtag not sponsored. Anyways, back to sensitivity. My targeting sense is pretty low. And I suggest everyone use a low targeting sense. Some people use 100%. Which means your ADS is the same as your hip fire. So when I aim in, it does not slow down at all. I think Calc does this. And Calc's aim is horrendous. Calc is so bad. I'm I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I feel like the only reason you aim in is because you want to hit a target that's far away. You're not aiming in on someone two feet away from you. I recommend starting at 50% and then going lower, seeing what you like. I for some reason settled on 27.5. I don't really know why. Same thing goes for your scope sensitivity. That's with snipers. I feel like with sniping, you want it to be a little faster than your normal ADS. That way you can quick scope. And then we have ignore gamepad input off, lock input method that is mouse off unless you're using the Wooting One keyboard or the Martos joystick. Mouse flight does not matter. And then invert aircraft mouse controls off. Who the heck cares? I believe all we have left. Oh wait, these are controller settings. Here are my audio settings if you guys care. I do have 3D headphones off because these are not studio headphones. I've heard 3D headphones is not the greatest unless you have a really expensive pair of headphones. And sound quality I do have on high. Having it on low can apparently make your audio cut out. I heard that happened to Benji Fishy. So turn it on high. You don't really need it on low. The real final page are keybinds, which I will reveal. In terms of optimal keybinds, I think the three most important binds that you want to be optimized, aka off your index and ring finger, those are the ones that you use to move around to your right and left. I believe those three binds are your ramp, your wall, and your cone. Most importantly, your wall, and then either your cone and ramp, because those are both used for peace control. Your floor is not really that important. Not only do you not use it for peace control, but even if you use Use it while you run. I have it on my index finger. You don't need to repeatedly press it, and you kind of never do, even when free building. You care way more about your wall, being able to move to the right or left while wall taking, being able to mongrel classic, and the one I don't have is coning your opponents. I really wish I had this off my ring finger and on my pinky or thumb. If only my pinky wasn't weird. So in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, you want to have most of your keybinds on your mouse. Your two mouse 
side buttons. I have those on wall and ramp, and you can see I can freely move to my right and left. My index finger never comes off of D, and my ring finger never comes off of A. It's so nice having optimal binds. Then some other fingers you can use for optimal keybinds are your left pinky. I don't know why I just did this, I don't know. That can hit left shift, which I use to crouch. A lot of people crouch with left control, so then they use cone on left shift, and that would be really nice. I wish I could do that. People also use their left thumb, so they use both thumbs. Their left one, they hit X, C, V. They can hit left alt. Anything on the bottom row of your keyboard, you can hit with your thumb. It's just, in my opinion, a lot harder to get used to than using your pinky or anything else. I don't have enough time to relearn building and moving with my thumb. My keybinds are as follows. I use W, A, S, D, space bar to jump, C for sprint, which I hit with my thumb. That's the little bot walk trick I showed. Auto run I have on Y. That's not too important. Crouch on left shift. What I'd also recommend is C with your thumb or left control. Please, for the love of God, do not use your index finger to crouch. You need to be able to strafe right and left as you crouch. Like, you really need to. After that, my combat is pretty default. Fire is left mouse click. Target, right mouse click. Reload on R. Use is basically interact. I have that on scroll wheel and I have it double bound with X. That's the other trick. If somehow you didn't see that, I don't know how. You must have skipped. I'm angry at you. Harvesting tool, I have on one. Then my weapons, two, three, four, five, V. I have pretty long fingers, so these are pretty easy to hit, but if you guys can't reach them, you can always use stuff like T or Q, maybe even ZXCV. Anything you're not using for your build binds, you can use for weapons or your harvesting tool. Please do not put your harvesting tool on your mouse. So many people do that, and it's such a waste of a good bind. You don't need to have your pickaxe optimized. Just put it on something you can reach that's on your index or ring finger. It's okay. I promise. Then building, we have my wall, I told you guys, my top mouse button, stairs on my bottom mouse button, floor on F, which is not optimal, roof on Q, trap on T, place building is left mouse click, repair slash upgrade is G, rotate building is R, change building material, right click, building edit on E, mouse wheel down is for scroll wheel reset, crouch again, left shift, select building edit, left click, and then reset building edit, right click, as well as scroll wheel down, that gives you scroll wheel reset, this is the best feature ever, the best keybind trick. I think everyone and their mother has this enabled. If they don't, I don't even know what to say to them. My ping or place marker is my middle mouse button. Place enemy marker, I don't have bound. Push to talk, left alt. This really isn't that important. Maybe toggle map is? I have that on M. Toggle inventory on tab. I don't think anything else is important. I'm not even trolling. I just ended the recording without even mentioning why you want edit on E. All I talked about was scroll wheel reset. E and F are the best edit binds by far. They're close enough to WASD where they don't really impact your movement too much. Same thing goes for Q or F or anything that's near WASD that is not G. G is the worst edit bind. Please switch to F or E. Left shift is good also, but I think most people have stronger index fingers than pinky fingers. You can actually use your thumb as well. I forgot Tifu did that and Tifu was the goat. Use scroll wheel up to pick up weapons. That way it frees up E and then you can use E or F to edit. Stop using G. Ah! Overall, guys, those are all the best settings you can use on keyboard and mouse in Fortnite Battle Royale. So if you enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jarian. I appreciate each and every one of you. Happy New Year's, guys. 2021 is going to be a huge year on the channel. I have some pretty crazy content planned, including a lot of IRL stuff. Let's just hope 2021 is better than 2020. Otherwise, that's it for me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later!